Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Thank you so much, Carrie. Hello, everyone. My name is Lay. Together with Faber Castell USA and Michael Stores, we'd like to welcome you for another fun hour of learning and playing with us. And today we are going to be celebrating Valentine already. It is February 1st. It is crazy to think that, but it is. Time is flying so by. Yes, I know my husband would say it's a sign of old age because I like to talk about the weather and the days, but would like to welcome everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, I want to say hello to everyone before we get started with the class. Hi, Lakita. Hi, Judith. Hello, everyone. It is a little chilly day today, especially from, from Texas. It is a bit cold. Um, Everyone is doing well. I hope you're all um, in good spirits as we uh, have some fun creating. And in front of me is my bullet journal notebook. Uh, I know that the class is centered into doing a bullet journal layout, but whatever we're going to be doing today, you can create this. Like, for example, you're going to create some DIY cards, you know, for your journaling and all that. There's so many ways, but because we're going to be learning some fun techniques in here, you can always apply that for another project. All right. So in front of me, I'm going to switch my camera. Here we go there. So I have my A5 notebook. Bullet journal is a term if you have, you know, if you're on social media, it's um it's a very popular term. It is a system that was created by Ryder Carroll. So bullet journal is a system. You know, um it is a planning system that supposed to help you be more productive in life and helps you have a system um, when it comes to your planning. So a lot of people have been creating bullet journal and there's a lot of mis misconception about it that you have to have, you have to have like fabulous layouts to do bullet journaling, which is actually <laughs> is, um, it's a myth. It's not truth. Again, the bullet journal is a system of planning that helps you, um, be more productive in everyday life. But you know, many different people use it for many different things, just for note taking. Um, some use it for their creativity. And a part of that is what we're going to do today also is we're going to create a fun layout, very simple. It's a romantic layout like here. It's super simple. It's easy and we can play around too. We can switch around the layout, but use the same techniques. What I'll be using today are my favorite pit artist pens from Faber. I have a few colors in here. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Faber Castell. Um, these are water-based India ink, and it comes with many, many different tips. I was just writing it down earlier because, you know, we are all different. Um, I know my I have some of my favorites, and you might be someone who likes more of a fine tip. And so Faber Castell, the Pit Artist Pens, comes in many different tips, especially the black one. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. We have the extra super fine this is the point one so if you're someone who likes really thin then this is the pen for you we have the super fine which is a point three that is my favorite when it comes to just handwriting all right so point three is my favorite there's also a fine the f and this is a point five the next one from that we have the medium nib which is a point seven and then have the regular bullet tip, which is a 1.5 bullet tip, of course. And then we have the calligraphy. I wrote it down here. Isn't it pretty? I'm still practicing with it. It comes with that chisel edge nib that can go from a, it's a 2.5. It's, it's a little tricky, but I think at one point we're going to have to do a class with using the calligraphy pen. There's also a soft chiseled, which I don't have currently in front of me. And then my favorite, of course, the brush, the brush tip. And there's also a soft brush, which I, I don't have in front of me. Now, let's talk a little bit about the nib because not a lot of people know about this one. Now, the Pit Artist Pen... This is the brush and let me just zoom in real quick. It's like actually getting two pens at one because for example, it is, you know, after a while, especially a brush tip, after a while you use this and if 
using the right paper, um, you, you will fray the tip of the nib of this brush. So if that happens, if you feel like, oh my gosh, it's too scratchy now, you know, you see some fine strokes on the side. If you have a something to pull it, you can actually pull the nib and then switch it back like this. And then you have a brand new nib. And I'll show you my mine. I have a baby here, so it's okay. Mine, I actually, because I write really heavy and I like to have easy, I mean, an easy thick stroke. So this is when it comes to brush pens. So when you do your downstroke like this, I really like to bend and apply a lot of pressure using the brush to create that br that thicker stroke right here. So what I do is for me personally, I pull it down, I pull the nib just slightly little, and it helps me to really apply some pressure with ease. So now it's like this. And that's just me. I hope you try it. If you're someone that who struggles with your downstroke, if you feel like you're not getting thick enough stroke that the one that you like, try just pulling a little bit of that nib. Just be careful if you have um, a tweezer, that will be much better so you don't end up with inks all over your fingers. So just pull it just a little bit and then see how you like that, you know? So just a little tip and I love using them. Okay. So for this layout right here, again, we're going to learn how to do some flowers. And if you can see my flowers in here, it's a little busy. But what helps this layout to be not overly busy and not overwhelming is the number of colors. The color palette is super soft. It gives us this very romantic, you know, um, color. So I have in front of me, I have the pale pink. Um, you can also use the middle purple pink, the pink matter, I'm going to give you guys colors that you can choose from. This is the palette. The pink carmine is super pretty also. Um, the coral is lovely. So these are beautiful Valentine colors. And then the beige red is what I did, was what I used to create those um, borders for my boxes. Um, yeah, the middle purple pink, all of that is super pretty. Uh, you can also use scarlet red. Let me pull this out real fast. So we have, look at all these pretty colors. Ah, so much. So if you have a palette of that colors, or if you don't want to use pinks today, that is totally fine. That's, that's okay. All right. So like what I said, um, if you're using, for example, if you're using a different planner, because I know a lot of people are not doing bullet journal, maybe you buy a happy planner or the ones from recollection, you know, <laughs> look how messy my inks now my finger is, um, you can use the ones from recollection that you can get from Michael's the artist loft are good also. So if you have a pre made planner, for example, the way that you can use what we're going to create today, the way you can do this in your planners or maybe create a border at the bottom or a border on top of your calendar. You know, that's another way to do this. But if we're going to start from scratch, I'm going to move my page in here like this. We can start with a pencil and some eraser. Now, this is just my layout that I like um, for the picture. I believe that I use some rectangles. I'm going to do that brightening so you can see it. You can also use circles. So this one. How I did that is that I created four boxes for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and also a blank space for some note area. You can also use some circles. I thought it would be pretty because I was always looking at it have a whole lot of space but also a big space will also mean a lot of work that means we're gonna have to fill it up real uh for a long time we're gonna have to create those florals um but also a little space means you don't have enough place to play so we can do circles also so we can start with circle maybe i, I got this one from michael's 
I love it. Maybe if you have something that's more a rectangle shape, you can do that. Or you don't even need to use a ruler for some rectangle. If you're using a dot grid, you can use the dot grid to kind of just help guide you. If you want that, divide your paper and create four rectangles like that. I know it's so hard to see because it's too bright, isn't it? Oop, I made it even more brighter. Maybe this will help. And also the pencil is super light. So you can do that. You can create four. One, two. So create lines first. I like to do my lines going down first and then close it in to create that rectangle shape. How about we do a rectangle in here and then on my right side, we can use some circles. So we have some here. I would like to know if you're someone who's very careful when it comes to their lines, do you use ruler all the time? Or are you someone like me that is most of the time just kind of like really create my lines like this? So sometimes it's crooked, but you know what? I love that imperfectly perfect look. Now I'm gonna choose which size I can use in here to create four. This might be too big. So I'm gonna go this one. And this one is two and two and a half. So I'm just going to, I'm leaving a border on top of my notebook as well, because on the top left is where we're going to put in the month. And then we can use this right side to put in top three for your month. I love doing that. That's the way I like to plan. I love having a top three for my whole month. The three things I need to be doing. Those are the important ones. And then the rest are just kind of like, as I move along my week, that's when I do that. Let's see if I did this correctly. That looks good. I have two circles. Lana said she likes to use the rulers. <laughs> she had to use it when I was she was in school. Okay, Ashley said um, she's I'm not careful. I'm just super. Free. Oh, okay. Clarissa, is it much better? It's not blurry on my end. So this one. Oh, this is a little hard now. Okay, I'll just add those circles and then we'll see. So we have two different layouts. So I wanted to do this so that you can see, you know, the two different results using two different shapes. I think it'll be fun um, because this is my sample notebook anyways. And then I can already see that I have put this down a little too low. So I'm gonna fix that. The lines are not gonna matter too much because the florals or the flowers that we're going to create today will serve as the borders you know so that's what's going to help us a lot so your lines or your circles are not going to be too important like that because the flowers are going to what serve um as our border and then inside the boxes and or inside the circles um is our white space okay so it's, <laughs> i can already see crooked in here but that's okay and so everything is just light for the flowers i'm going to use a different page to demonstrate how we're going to create the flowers and this is super is easy easy okay i am going to use the brush pen now you've seen me earlier do my brush lettering because the brush pen is such a fantastic tool um you can create from point i think one millimeter to five depending on how much pressure you use it and of course when you are going to create a thicker stroke, it is very important to make sure that your pen is around 45 degree angled. So you don't do it like this. I'm going to show you a difference when I have the pen pointing, pointing down, and when I have it angled and apply some pressure. Notice the difference. I'm applying the same pressure. If I hold my pen and bend it down like this, this is the thickest stroke that I can create. But if I angle it like this and apply some pressure, 
that's how much of a thick stroke I can create. Okay, so it's going to depend on that pressure you apply in your pen and also the position that you have while using your brush pen. Okay, so moving on to my next page so I can just show you my flowers. The flowers that we're going to create today is going to be imperfectly perfect. I will start, I usually like to start with a letter C, a very small C. But because I'm using a brush pen, I can play around with the variation of strokes, depending on how much pressure I apply. So when I start with my letter C, I'm going to zoom it in real quick. Let's see this like that. Like that. So I have my letter C in the middle of a C. I just kind of do this and I apply pressure and I release it. So to create the very thin stroke, I'm using the tip. I'll start again here. Tip, bend, apply pressure, and release again. So it's kind of like using a, um, a nylon brush, you know, the watercolor brushes. You use the tip for a thin stroke and use the body of the pen to create that thicker stroke. Okay, and let's do this again. Thin to start my line, angle it, and then use the body and now release and use the tip again. So we create this beautiful, and this is how we're going to create the pens. Again, I'm gonna use the tip of the pen, like this so you guys can see, tip of the pen use the body and apply pressure and then like that see how beautiful that is and then i just keep applying that notice how this one is not thick enough because of the way i angled my pen so if you have to move your paper around to help you you should do that and i'll do this again the tip apply my pressure because my pen is angled, I can create this beautiful thin and thick stroke like that. So I'm gonna fix this one side because this one didn't look like that. So I'll do it again, apply pressure and then like that. Now, because here, a lot of lines, we have a lot of space so we can create this thicker strokes like this. But what if we don't have a lot of space? We can still create this imperfectly perfect flower by still doing the same thing by just using the tip. If you're don't if you're not using a brush pen today, it's okay. So you can just go and do add your lines and see still it's going to look super pretty. So we're going to create and I am intentionally creating it and wiggling my lines to make it look even more imperfect. So I'm not trying to create perfect strokes. You notice how my lines are like jagged and wiggly. And I think it adds that character that I really am looking for. So you can start with that too, right? Or what you can do with your flower as well is we can start with a spiral. Look at this. Like this. And go around and around and around and around. So that's just another one. It's just a different look. So nothing is going to be perfect, but it's perfect. And then we can also create, I'm gonna show you this one like that. This is kind of more like a rose bud. And when you create that, just like that. like that. So th look at how different they are. But to me, everything in here looks so great. I'm going to start with that spiral again. But as I'm doing that, I'm applying pressure. So I'm having this variety of strokes because I apply pressure heavy and then use the tip, go here and apply pressure. So we can do like that half circles or letter C's. And of course, the wider um, your petals are, the bigger your flowers. So you want to pay attention to that. So 
if you want just small flowers so then try um and write just or draw very small letter c's first or half circles you can start with that isn't that so beautiful that's super pretty but notice how this one because i have very very limited limited space in here so everything is just kind of like letter C and I add my petals, you know, differently. I definitely, I wasn't aiming for perfect here because look at my jaggedy lines. Look at that. But it looks good. It looks more like modern, <laughs> like art of flower. So no one's going to judge you. No one's going to judge your, your creation, okay? But yourself. And so that's why it is important that we be kind to ourselves because we're the only ones judging us and we're the only ones that matter. So speak kindly to yourself. Give yourself a lot of grace. Okay, so when you have a limited space like this, how are we going to do that? Then we're going to have just to create much smaller type of flower. And how I usually like to do this as I start in the middle, it just kind of gives me, um, um, I don't know, much more um, preparation, how I really want to approach things. So I start in the middle of the page and I started with just, it looks like a letter G if you look at it. So I started with my C and then I just added this letter like this one. So it looks like a G to me, <laughs> unintentionally, but like that. So I'm gonna just keep adding petals like this, like that, and just like that. So I'm not gonna make it too big. And then I'll go, when I have this one in the middle, I'll start here. And then some of it, you won't be able to create a full flower. Because for example, we're going to look like it's that is our border so here on top if you want to go move a little bit on top because what i want is just put ink on the paper because sometimes a blank page is what's the most frightening frightening to me you know so it's kind of like okay i just need to put something down and then i feel like after that i'm more relaxed you know if i make a mistake it's okay but i just need to lay down a color or an ink or an illustration or a dot just to put my first foot down, I should say, I must say. Okay, so now, like what I was saying, areas we won't be able to create full flower like this because we have small space. And so for here, use or your imagination that we're creating half of a flower. So again, like a letter G in here. And I'm gonna add my petal like that. I'm gonna add my petal. And then here. So basically, this is half of the flower, right? So part of it is underneath this white space. All right, so that's how we're going to do it. We're going to have to fill in this whole area. So again, try not to overthink it and just have fun creating imperfect lines right now look at my spacing i have spacing like this because we're gonna have to put in some leaves in here so you can do your leaf as you go along for example here we can add the leaves just like that can go on the other side like that and then here you can maybe half of leaf right there and then do this on the other side. And that's why I mentioned earlier that you can create this and use this as a border in your planner, in your calendars. I think that's going to be super pretty. If you already have like dates in your planners, you know, some dated um, planners that you have, for example, you have the word February, you can put this around the, the word of February in there for your month. All right, so I'm just going to go and keep adding my flower. And I am intentionally trying to just kind of play around with my strokes. Some are like super wobbly lines and some are like much smoother than the rest. Look at that, just half of the petal. And here I add my leaf in here. I'll have one on the other side. 
All right, here maybe I'll add one flower, small. Just like that. And here again, some are like looking like egg yolks. <laughs> like that. I'll add some leaves. One thing I really love about the Pit Artist pens is that they don't have any smell and also they dry fast. Once they're dry, they're also smudge proof and they're also waterproof. So for example, um, after your of your flowers and say, you know what? I would like to color this with some watercolor. Guess what? You have the perfect pen for it. This is the perfect pen because it is waterproof and also they are acid free and they are highly light fast, which means the colors are going to stay vibrant for many, many years to come. That's why many artists love the pit artist pens. I personally do. Okay, some, this one is, look, this one is much, much bigger than the rest. I'll add some leaves in here, just like that, like that. Here, I think I'm gonna fine with that. Again, play around with the size of your petals. Make some are much smaller than the rest. But again, that's going to be the size of your full flower. So also be mindful while playing around. Have, you know, be mindful of, okay, this is going to be the size. You can just keep adding. My problem in the beginning is that I don't know when to stop adding some petals. I just kept going <laughs> and it just keeps getting bigger. Oh my goodness. All right. This one too. Okay. Like that. And add one. Now I created a spiral and then I stop, small spiral, and then I added my petals. But they look so beautiful. And the monochromatic also, because we didn't I didn't use any colors for the flowers. I think that's what made it super simple, but effective at the same time just because they're black and white and then everything else pops, you know, the pink. Here, half. Like that. So this is why I love the brush pen is because you can create very thin lines. Look, I can go as thin as I'd like and then create thick lines like this by just applying some pressure and it just gives this whole totally different look just like that <laughs> that one i couldn't stop adding petals so it looks a little big it's okay though It's like that. I think the more you use a brush pen, you really get the hang of it because I, I understand it can get a little frustrating, especially if you're going to use it for lettering, you know, but for illustration, it's so fun to use it because like what I said, my type of art, the way I like to do my line art or my drawings are, it's kind of like a comic look. I love the thin and the thick line, like what we're doing here now. So even if I'm drawing like kawaii characters, I love seeing that um, variation of the thin and the thick. It's just so fun. 
But also, even the clean look of the fine tip pens are beautiful also. It's just one of those things that it's just personal preference. You know, maybe you're someone who likes, you know, I really like that thin and very fine tip. Um, that's, that's beautiful also. Art is subjective. Look at this. I kind of like have a heart in the middle. Try that. Start to have like a heart in the middle of your flower. See what it's going to look like. Okay, I think my flowers are getting much bigger and bigger. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try. Look how much bigger, but it's okay though, because the more you get to the bottom, some, it looks like it's much bigger in here. So it looks like I intentionally did that, but no, <laughs> I didn't. So I'm just gonna keep adding. Like that. When you're trying to draw something and you feel like, okay, look at my hand right now. It looks so bent over and hard. It's, I am trying hard not to do this. So you shouldn't also, you should move your canvas or your notebook around instead of your hand moving around so much and you're get, putting so much strain, you know, because art's not supposed to hurt. So try to move around your canvas like this where you find it most comfortable. Especially if you're gonna spend a lot of hours creating and uh, drawing. So you should always try to find the most comfortable spa. So I'm gonna do wiggly, jaggedy lines like this. Oh, it looks so pretty already. Like that. I'm going to do this one where it's just half of my flowers. I'll do the spiral again. Like, so everything is just shapes. When you're doing art, I think what happens is that we try to overwhelm our things. Oh, we, we try to overwhelm our minds. Just thinking of the whole picture is kind of like, how am I going to draw all that? That's going to take forever. And yes, it sometimes can take forever. But in all honesty, is that you just have to start somewhere. We started with just one flower, what we have now. So you just have to start. like that and I'll copy this one where all the leaves are like sticking out from the sides and I'll add one here too all right then I'll do this one
that. Remember to create your thin strokes, use the tip of your pen. Like that. For the thick, angle it and apply pressure to create this thick variation. I'll just do it so you guys can see how thick it can be, like that. See? Like that. And that what I was thinking is that for the right side, we can actually create, because you've seen this one, and you can practice this and continue it if you'd like. But I was thinking we can create like a small bouquet over here to frame this. So create like a semi wreath for the circles. I think that would be lovely. Just like that. this like that like that So that's what we have. It looks so pretty. <laughs> Those ones look super thick, but it's okay because I wanted to demonstrate that. Now, if you, the, the pencil marks, if you don't like it, you can use an eraser and just lightly go over it. And then you can erase the mark like that. I need to get more of my favorite kneadable erasers, but this one is, Perfect also, I love this. There we go. There. So inside we can use like a very light pink we can use the pale pink. This one is a pale pink 114. And I'm gonna use this to create the border. I'll just go around. You remember that pencil mark that I erased? I'm gonna go over it to really highlight the separation without it being too overpowering everything because of a light color. Now, if you have a light blue also, that might be really pretty. Just to show the border around. Like that. Go over that side. Now for the dates and I'm gonna use a different color, a different pink. So because of the flowers are super busy, if we're going to use many different colors in here, it might a little bit too, um, too much. That's why I'm going to stick to maybe three colors, a three color palette. Like that. And this pale pink is very, very light, super pretty. It's like it's there, but it's not there. So I am going to use the Pink Matter Lake. The middle purple pink is also super lovely, super pretty. So that's the different two pinks that I have in here. Oh, is it? Let's see. Crazy. There you go. And then let's adjust the brightness like that so you can see the difference. I mean, they look like they are the same, but they're not. I'm gonna try and use them both so you can see. And I'm not gonna make this overly complicated. I'm gonna draw a circle 
you can you you can create a heart maybe we'll try a heart on the other one to see what it looks like i'll do that i'll do a heart on this one okay And then maybe do a heart in here and a circle in the other. Like that. You can choose to create your days of the week. Um, just use black maybe to make it really pop. Or you can choose either one of the pink, or if you want to use a different color, maybe like um, a gray. I think that's going to look pretty. Or a red one for it to pop even more. You can do that. What do you think we should use for the dates? How about black? Um, where's my brush? Okay, this one. And then you can use, um, you can write it in script or print you know, whichever you're most comfortable. I love doing brush lettering, so I'm going to do it in a script way. Notice again the thin and thick line, and no, I am holding my brush pen also. I'm not writing like this one, pointing up straight. It is slanted. So I'll do my Tuesday in here. So mine is angled. If I am going to write just regular handwriting, I would normally write just like everybody else, just straight up like this. But when I am hand lettering and I'm doing a brush lettering, I always have my hands angled like this, 45 degree. And then, so I'm able to maximize and create the thick stroke using my brush pen like this and then Wednesday I'll do a Thursday in here that. black outlined with silver oh that's super pretty too I actually think I have a gold in here yeah, this gold one is super pretty. We can add a line down here if we want. Like that. And we can also use this gold pit artist pen. This one is in a uh, bullet tip, a 1.5. And then we can also use this to add the days or the dates for the week. Things it looks so lovely, so pretty. Okay, so for this one, like what I said, I want to show you another. I want to show you another tip because we have not a whole lot of time, but I want to show you this: how to create another way, how to create your florals, and to erase part of this. Like what I said, kind of like make a wreath, right? So I'm cutting half of this circle like that i know exactly how to do it where to position it so I'll, i'm leaving the rest just to give me a guide so for this one i want you to pick two colors of pink a very light one you know maybe use the pale pink if you have it and then the pink we can use this what we're gonna do is we're gonna create just a circle and i'm gonna cover this so you don't see the like that so you don't get bothered by the flowers underneath all right so we're gonna draw the base of our flower first like for example like this big so an imperfect circle i'm gonna zoom in like that okay now, this one is going to depend on the paper that you're using. One thing that I love about the um, Pit Artist Pen, because they're water-based India ink, 
um, the colors are slightly translucent, but that means that you can use it almost like a watercolor. There's like glazing. See how this part right here is darker than, okay, hold on. If I put another layer on top of this, it will create a darker value, but I'm using the same marker. So that's how watercolors work, right? The first layer is a wash layer, and then you add more layer on top of it, you can create more detail. So I'm using the same marker and it gave me two different values of color, and I'm using the same pale pink. So we can definitely stick to one color in here and just keep adding layers like that and add our letter C also, like what we created earlier, to create this floral. Or also use a different pink. So I'm going to start with my letter C, and then add that, and create more half circle. this like that so I'm just filling in that first shape that we created that base imperfect circle that one maybe we can make a bit more larger go over it a little bit that. And again, if I add another layer, it's going to give me a different value. This one's already darker. So you can add parts of it where it's some are darker using the same marker. And that's what I love about it. You know, other markers, you have to use maybe one, two, three different color to achieve a different value of color. But this one, we're using the same color and we're just adding on top of that, like that. And then I can still use a different color, like the, let's say, I'm gonna use the pink carmine. And then in the middle of this floral, the flower, I'm gonna add just like imperfect dots, just like that, to add details to that. Beautiful, love it. Now you can use a green, um, for your leaves, but I want this to match this, this aesthetic of like very soft romantic look, almost like a modern um, to me. So I'm going to use my gold. If you don't have the gold, if you have a green, you can use the green. If you have a black, you can actually use the black. And for this one, in the middle, I'm going to draw a curving line, leaving a white in the middle, and I'm going to fill in the rest of my leaves. Just like that. Just this very different look. And then I'll do the same. Draw my leaf shape. Draw two lines going down, leaving a white space in the middle. Then fill it in. Just like that. I feel like going in again with the black and just add some small dots in the middle like this. The stymen of the flower. Just like that. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Then I want to add another flower in here, maybe smaller in size. I'll start with my pale pink again. Like that. And then I'll just add another one here. The reason why I'm starting with the base shape, it also helps me to compose the position and the arrangement of my flowers. So I know, okay, I have two other flowers in here and then I'll draw the leaves again, the bigger ones. And then I'll start with this one. So I added two, okay? Two smaller ones. Come back in. I'll just fill it in like 
that. And then I'll finish this. Beautiful and perfectly perfect, just the way I like it. Just like me. <laughs> and perfectly perfect. Come back in here and darken, add more, deepen the shade of my pink, just using the same marker. And I'll just come back in with a black. I don't even have to use one now. So just using the tip of the marker to create those little tiny stymons in the middle. Like that. So pretty. Then again, I will follow what I did in this part and finish this up. Like this. We're gonna leave that white part in the middle and then fill in this area right here, like that. Much smaller one. Just like that. Look, it is so pretty. And again, like what I was saying, your results might be different than mine because of the paper that I'm using. So it's important to use very smooth surface paper, like Bristol paper, very soft. Um, uh, marker papers are really good too, to do that layering, to do that blending. You're going to get different results with different papers. That's why I love playing around with different surfaces, you know, um, using my markers and whatever medium that you're using. So for here, you can follow along what we did on this first flower and complete your whole spread. And then you can use the same pink matter and add a smaller in here. And then we can add the date. Well, I'm going to show you what it looks like if it's just a print. It's still super very pretty. Just like that. And we can use the gold if you'd like. You can actually use the gold to complete your circle, your frame. But just like that, different results. Look at this. This one is a very different. And then you can create a wreath, like a, a frame for your spreads like this. I mean, I hope this was fun because I really had so much fun teaching you different techniques and different ideas for your layout. I hope that you were able to pick up some inspiration from this um, class today. And if you created anything with, with us, would love to see it, of course. You can use the hashtag make it with Michaels on social media. Um, you know, follow us also on social media. Um, make sure to hashtag Faber Castell um, and make sure to show us some love and follow. And I would love to um, stay connected with you as well. You can use the hashtag Mommy Lay. Find me all over social media as well. If you have any questions that I was not able to answer here, you can reach out to me on social media and I'll help you with your problems as long as it doesn't have to do with math. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much. My name is Lay Rolson. That was super fun. I hope to see you again next week next Wednesday, we're going to be drawing a fun gnome for Valentine. And also for the premium class, we'll be creating a much more detailed flower. I believe that we're going to draw some paint, some sea holly. And for that one, make sure to check out the materials because like what I said, to create some beautiful blending, it's going to depend on the marker pad that you're using a paper pad you know it's very important so anyways again thank you all so much i hope that this was fun can't wait for you to try it i can't wait to see it and i'll see you guys again for the next class thank you everyone